Hello, our today's lesson will be about the initial encounter and subsequent colonization of the Spaniards in the Philippine archipelago. As an overview, this topic will start with Ferdinand Magellan's expedition during the 16th century, wherein it saw the initial encounter between the Proto-Filipinos and the Spaniards. After Magellan's voyage come subsequent expedition sent by Spain in an attempt to conquer the Philippines. This endeavor had only been realized upon the arrival of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi in 1565. By that time, he was able to establish a colonial settlement in Cebu, thus starting the 333-year rule of the Spaniards in the Philippines. This lesson aims to narrate in brief the various expeditions sent by Spain and the initial response of the natives against the colonizers. After successful completion of this lesson, the student should be able to evaluate primary sources pertaining to the initial encounter between the native Proto-Filipinos and the Spaniards in the 16th century and to determine the initial response of the natives during the first half of the Spanish occupation. Magellan and Subsequent Expeditions Ferdinand Magellan is a Portuguese explorer and mariner. He was a promising officer and was given the opportunity to reach various Portuguese territories overseas. However, his career suffered a decline when he was accused of financial irregularities while in Morocco. Although these were unfounded reports, King Manuel of Portugal refused to grant him a generous reward for his service to the country, a service which claimed his leg, causing him to be limp for the rest of his life. This made with the treatment of the Portuguese king, he swore his loyalty to King Charles I of Spain. Along with the Portuguese cosmographer Rui Faleiro, they offered their services to the Spanish monarch and proposed a plan to discover a new trade route to the fabled Spice Islands. On March 22, 1518, Magellan received the approval for his proposal. Although the expedition initially experienced some setbacks, it finally left Seville, Spain on August 10, 1519, although their actual voyage started on September 20, 1519. There were five ships included in the expedition, Victoria, Concepcion, San Antonio, Santiago, and Trinidad, which served as Magellan's flagship, along with some 270 crew members. These five ships were not of new and were not fitted to the liking of Magellan, but it did not deter him from continuing his journey. After more than one year, on October 21, 1520, Magellan was able to discover a passage which connects two great bodies of water, the Atlantic Ocean and the newly discovered Pacific Ocean. This passage was then referred to as the Strait of Magellan. During this time, only three out of the five original ships were able to cross the passage because one ship has, had deserted while one had been wrecked. The crew members of the expedition experienced horrible conditions while crossing the Pacific Ocean. It was even described that some of the men were forced to eat leather parts of their gears and garments just to keep them from being alive. Their agony only ended when they were able to replenish their stocks when they reached Guam on March 6, 1521. They initially called the island as the Island of Sails, but later changed it to Isla de Ladrones when the natives stole a boat from the ship Trinidad. Ladrones means a thief in Spanish. On March 16, 1521, they were able to land on the island of Zamal or Samar. 
It so happened that it was the feast of St. Lazarus on that day. That is why Magellan named the islands they saw as the archipelago of St. Lazarus. They then went to Humunu or the present-day Homonhon, where they were where they met the rulers of Butuan and Caraga, Raja Shagu and Raja Kulambu. On March 27, 1521, they left Homonhon and reached Masau in Butuan on the following day. Magellan and Raja Kulambu had a blood compact as a sign of their friendship. On March 31, 1521, Father Pedro de Valderrama offered a mass. The crew later installed a cross on the mountains, signifying the conquest of the land. From Homunhon, the expedition, through the, assess- through the assistance of Raja Kulambu, sailed to Cebu, where they met Raja Humabon on April 7, 1521. Although reluctant at first, Humabon acquainted with Magellan and their friendship was cemented through a blood compact. On April 14, 1521, a mass was officiated in Cebu and a cross was once again installed as a sign of conquest of the land. Magellan invited the natives to be baptized, an invitation they gladly accepted. Along with Humabon and his wife, more than 800 natives were baptized. Humabon was christened as Fernando while his wife was christened as Juana. As a gesture of friendship, an image of the child Jesus or Santo Nino was gifted by Magellan to Juana. This image is revered in Cebu up until the present time. Not not all of the chieftains in Cebu wanted to establish friendship with Magellan. Lapu-Lapu, one of the chief of Mactan, refused to accept the Spaniards. Apart from Lapu-Lapu, another chief in Mactan named Zula wanted to defeat the former. Zula sought the assistance of Magellan, who without hesitation agreed to fight Lapu-Lapu. Magellan was too confident that they will be able to defeat Lapu-Lapu to the point that he refused the offer of Humabon to fight with him. A group of 60 men arrived in Mactan on April 27, 1521. Out of this number, 11 were, me- were left to man the ships, while 49 waded toward the shore. Magellan and his men were thwarted by Lapu-Lapu's warriors. The Mactan warriors, totaling to more than 1,050 or 1,500, formed three divisions to repel the Spaniards. The foreigners were shot with arrows, bamboo lances, and stones. A poisoned arrow hit Magellan on his leg. It was only then that he ordered a retreat. A bamboo lance then hit his arms while a javelin struck his back, causing him to fall face downwards. Upon seeing the death of their leader, the Spaniards soon retreated to their ships. They requested that the body of Magellan be handed over to them, a request which was denied by the natives. For them, the body is a trophy and a symbol of their valor and victory. The horrors of the Spaniards experience, the horrors that the Spaniards experience did not end there. Humabon was quite disenchanted with the defeat of the Spaniards. He connived with Enrique de Malaca, the slave of Magellan who was abused by Duarte Barbosa, Magellan's successor as leader of the expedition, to kill the remaining Spaniards. He he invited the remaining Spaniards to have a dinner with him in his palace. Twenty-six Spaniards went to the palace, and while they were eating, they were treacherously killed by the natives. Out of this number, 24 were killed including Duarte Barbosa, Juan Serrano, and Pedro de Valderrama, the priest who baptized them. The remaining crew members quickly left Cebu and started their voyage to return home. 
On their way southwards, they were able to reach Palawan, Brunei, Mindanao, and Malukas. They then decided that the two remaining ships, Trinidad and Victoria, will take two different routes. Trinidad, commanded by Gomez de Espirera, will cross again the Pacific in the hope of crossing and reaching Mexico. While Victoria, commanded, commanded by Sebastián de Elcano, will sail to Spain by crossing the Indian Ocean and the African coast. Trinidad was not able to complete its goal for it was captured by the Portuguese in Molucas. Victoria, on the other hand, was able to return to Spain on September 6, 1522, after 2 years, 11 months, and 16 days. Out of the 270 original crew members, only 18, along with 4 Indians, survived the journey. Upon return to Spain, the motto, Primus Circum de Distime, or You Circumnavigated Me First, was awarded to Sebastian Elcano. Subsequent Voyages Magellan's expedition proved to be catastrophic in terms of the human lives lost. However, it was successful in terms of commercial profit. The spices brought by the surviving crew members were sold at a high price that they were able to gain more than sufficient to cover the expenses incurred by the Spanish crown in launching the expedition. The commercial success of the venture motivated the Spanish crown to launch more expeditions to the east. Following Magellan's expedition is the expedition of Loaiza. On 1525, an expedition comprising of seven ships and 450 men was launched with Garcia Jofre de Loaiza as the leader. This is a failed expedition because the ships were dispersed by a storm upon crossing the Strait of Magellan. Following Loaiza's expedition is the Cabot Expedition. Launched in 1526, the expedition was headed by Sebastian Cabot. He had the command over four ships and 250 men, but was unable to find and reach the Strait of Magellan. Following this expedition is the Saavedra Expedition. In 1527, another expedition comprised of three vessels and 110 men was launched, with Álvaro Saavedra Serón as the leader. It was the first expedition launched from the Viceroyalty of New Spain in Mexico. The expedition was tasked to rescue possible survivors of the previous ill-fated expeditions. Out of the three ships, only the Florida remained. It was able to reach Surigao, but failed to establish a colony there. It then went to Tidore, when it was able to rescue several survivors. Afterwards, they loaded the ship with spices and attempted to return to Spain. However, climatic conditions as well as the deterioration of health and eventual death of Saavedra forced the crew members to surrender to the Portuguese. The fourth one is the Villalobos Expedition. After 15 years, King Charles I sent in 1542 another expedition comprised of six ships and around 400 men. Villalobos was able to reach Mindanao but failed to conquer the land. He named Mindanao as Cesarea Caroli in honor of the Spanish king while the entire archipelago was named as Filipinas in honor of, of Prince Philip of Spain. William Lobos eventually died in Molucas where he was consoled by Saint Francis Xavier. The last expedition is the Legaspi expedition. Upon receiving instruction from King Philip II, the then Viceroy of New Spain 
organized an expedition comprised of four ships with 380 men. Miguel Lopez de Legazpi was tasked to command the expedition which left Mexico on November 19, 1564. Along with him are other colonial officials and five Augustinian friars. Among the previously mentioned attempts of the Spaniards to conquer the Philippines, it was the Gaspis expedition that completed the goal of colonial expansion and signaled the start of Spanish domination in the Philippines. Legazpi and the Colonization of the Philippines As what was mentioned in the previous discussion, Legazpi's expedition was consisted of 380 men, most of which were Mexicans. Father Andres de Urdaneta, a survivor of the Loaiza expedition, served as the chief navigator, while other high-ranking officers include Felipe Salcedo, Guido de la Vizares, and Melchor de Legazpi. They reached Cebu on February 13, 1565. They were not able to land in Cebu on the first attempt, that is why they went to Samar, a neighboring island, where they were accepted by the chief Urao. A blood compact was done on February 22, 1565 in order to cement the friendship. On March 9th, they went to Limasawa where they encountered Bancao, who enthusiastically welcomed them. They then went to Bohol and sought the friendship of Gala and Katuna. Afterwards, they went back to they went back again to Cebu. On their second attempt, forces of Raja Tupas fought against the Spaniards but were eventually defeated due to the military superiority of the latter. Tupas and his men retreated to the mountains. Legazpi, on the other hand, made efforts to woe the native chieftain to return. By using the policy of attraction, Tupas was eventually convinced by Legazpi to return to the plains. He was then baptized and became a Catholic. The friendship forged between the two started the miseries and hardships of the Proto-Filipinos for the next three centuries, for that gesture signaled the, expan the expansion of Spanish sovereignty over the archipelago. The Cebuanos agreed to pay tribute to the King of Spain as a sign of their subjugation in exchange for protection. Legazpi established the first Spanish settlement in Cebu. In honor of the Santo Nino image that his soldiers found in one of the houses in the area, he named the city as the Ciudad del Santísimo Nombre de Jesús, or the City of the Most Holy Name of Jesus. It is the same image that is venerated in the minor basilica of Santo Nino in Cebu. Father Andres de Urdaneta was then sent back to New Spain on board the ship San Pedro on July 1, 1565, and was able to discover the Torna Viaje or the eastward route going back to Mexico. Due to the scarcity of food provisions as well as the threat of Portuguese attack in Cebu, Legazpi was forced to transfer to Panay Island in 1569. It was on this island that they established the second Spanish settlement in the Philippines. Through the help of Father Juan de Alva and Father Martin de Rada, the Spaniards were able to win the trust of the natives. Soon, more natives will be converted in the island. Spanish colonization will then spread to Luzon and is highlighted by the capture of Manila. On May 8, 1570, Martin de Goiti, along with some 120 Spaniards and hundreds of Visayan warriors, left Panay. They reached and explored the Pansipit River in Taal, Batangas, where they were able to find some friendly natives who joined their group. From there, they were able to reach Maynilad, which was ruled by Raja Matanda and his nephew Raja Sulaiman. 
The chiefs welcomed the goiti to their chiefdom and showed courtesy. As a matter of fact, Sulaiman even performed kasi kasi with the goiti as a symbol of their newly established friendship. However, things turned bitter when Sulaiman declined to pay tribute to the Spanish king and to submit himself under the sovereignty of Spain. A battle ensued which resulted to the burning of the settlement. Sulaiman was overwhelmed by the Spaniards and was forced to retreat across the river while the Spaniards took some of the cannons which Pandaypira forged. The Goiti then returned to Panay and notified Legaspi of his exploration of Luzon and the richness of Mainilad. Enticed with this, Legaspi ordered for a second attempt to subdue Manila. A stronger force comprised of 27 vessels, 280 Spaniards, and some 600 Visayan warriors left Panay sometime in the middle of April 1571. Realizing the military superiority of the Spaniards and its allies, the rulers of Manila and Tondo, Lacandula and Suleiman, sought peace and resorted to diplomatic measures in order to avert bloodshed. Legaspi was able to take possession of Manila on May 19, 1571, without the use of force but through convincing the natives of their good intentions quite the same with what they did in Cebu. Not all of the people of Manila and Tondo were contented with the decision of their leaders, that is why some of the remaining warriors gathered in Navotas to challenge the Spaniards. On June 3, 1571, the group comprised of some 2,000 warriors in 40 Coracoras from Hagonoy, Makabebe, and other areas of Pampanga sailed to Bangkusai Creek where they fought the forces of Martin de Goiti. On June 24, 1571, the feast day of St. John the Baptist, Legaspi proclaimed the creation of Manila as the capital of the Philippines. A year later, King Philip II named the city Insigne y Siempre Le Leal Ciudad or the distinguished and ever loyal city.